So we know Nick Bosa, reigning defensive player of the year. But this game, the 49ers, they had to play, so without Eric Armstead, and Javon Hargrave was out after 28 snaps. So Kalia Davis, Kevin Givens, like they played a lot in this game, as did Javon Kinlaw. So I'm going to focus on the front seven. But I think the defensive tackles deserve a ton of credit for how they played in this game. There's Kevin Givens all but making the play right there. All right, so here's why split zone, inside zone, doesn't work. And for those of you, split zone comes across the formation, the tight end to block the unblocked edge rusher from the opposite side of the screen. But the 49ers, they just move way too much up front for you to be able to pull that off. Watch everybody steps over to a gap, and it just gets blown up. Watch Nick Bosa. So he starts here, ends up crossing a player's who basically two gaps over, crosses his face. So if the design is to run into this bubble right here, good luck. So that's blown up. And then the cutback, you just have 57 as the fallback player right in his lap. Just very difficult. They're playing so sound right now against the run, which I think is a big reason why the 49ers defense has kind of flipped a switch and looked more of the version that we've seen in years past. So I talked about the defense tackles. Here's Kevin Givens again. So Gregory, Givens, Hargrave, who's still in at this point, and then Chase Young. So your second string, effectively, uh, defensive line. So this is a trap play. And by that, I mean, so watch Givens right here. They're going to leave him unblocked, hoping that he runs up the field and takes himself out of the play. And that's where this pulling lineman comes across and picks him up. For him to recognize and not run up field, so he takes one step. That is just incredible. Like That just tells you how good of a coach Chris Kosirik is to have his guys ready. But we see so many times over the course of you know a week, the defense tackles run up the field, take themselves out of the play. Instead, Givens doesn't fall for it, takes on the pulling blocker, actually fits underneath him, which is pretty athletic, and is able to make the tackle for a stop. Just, I mean, can gush about a lot. I've, I can gush about some of the plays that these guys made. It, these little ones, though, are just really impressive to me. That right there, wow. So Seattle scored 16 points, and when they're scoring off plays like this, or I guess when they're getting chunk plays, explosive plays off plays like this, when you have one of your better players – one-on-one -on -one in the hole. We just showed the last play where he made the tackle. This time, Greenlaw whiffs. Thomas overruns a play. And you have a long run. And that's what led to their first points of the game. But, I mean, again, like everybody's in position to make a play, right? The defensive line does their job. Kinlaw eats a double. One-on-one. -on -one, overrun. Just mistakes right there. And those are not sustainable, which is why the 49ers were able to limit uh, Seattle in this game. So... We talk about 97, like we all know how good he is. He's the best player, one of the best players in the NFL. But there are still plays that he makes where you're just like, whoa. So right there, he just cuts inside of the tight end, I believe. And this poor running back spins, thinking that, all right, I'm in the clear. After he makes Randy Gregory miss, little does he know. Boom. And I'm going based off memory here. I don't think Charbonnet had another long carry um, after this drive, so I think he had two in this drive back-to-back. -back. But that hit, I know he felt that one. Um, and I'm he did come out of the game after this play because he did feel that one. So I think this is the best angle where you just kind of see the impact of the hit. So as you can see, Bosa, that, that tight end, just no shot right here as Bosa creeps in. So the play's dead, and then running back pays for it. Goodness, man, how about that? So coming into this game, Javon Kinlaw, he was in the top 40 against both run stop win, win rate, sorry, and pass rush win percentage. He was 27th and 40th, respectively. Here he is right here. Kinlaw's been making plays. Right there, he just pushed the defense tackle back just enough, and he's able to make a tackle for loss. So I'm, I'm showing this because individually, they have so many good players that at some point over the course of a series, one of them are going to win, whether that's the backups like Javon Kinlaw, Kevin Givens. Uh, you'll see Randy Gregory make play like this from Steve Wilkes in this game quite a bit too, where he would use, so Young, Gregory, Bosa. He would interchange one of the edge rushers and move them inside. But, you know, you're down Eric Armstead. You have Hargrave, who's banged up. So why, why rely on multiple bigger guys, right? Why not use your personnel? And he did that to a T. So you have Randy Gregory inside here you have drew lock 
who's getting ready to throw a hospital ball. Good Lord, if Jason catches that, he <laughs> he's probably on the injury report. But as you can see from this angle, I mean, those are just wins that are going to happen over the course of the season. I mean, Bosa annihilated the right guard all day. So he was a rookie, and getting one of your best pass rushers on him was a good game plan coming in. And here you can see a smart decision, 11. Don't catch that. Your health is not worth it. So since the bye week, basically since Jacksonville had a drive where they just screened the 49ers to death, we've seen a lot of other teams try to mimic the same thing. But these long developing screens, that's just not going to work. You're going to have to throw to the slot receiver. You're going to have to throw something quick, something hot, because these two, they just fly around. Watch 54 here. He's a linebacker to the bottom of the screen. He reads the screen, and he just floats. I mean – one two-yard gain on a screen that just tells you how fast these guys are over the course of a game one of these defensive linemen are going to make a play effectively every series the 49ers just so happen to have a singular defensive lineman who it seems like he makes a play every every series what are you supposed to do and like in practice this works right in practice you don't have an edge rusher coming who's able to squeeze first of all most defensive ends right here like they'll just wait right they're not going to squeeze with the puller bosa does and he runs over the block and now your play is dead and i'm pretty sure on the next play i think he bats the pass let's see it here i think it's a, a, one of those quick plays no it's not he gets in the throwing lane and just bit like two plays and he just eliminates yourself or eliminates your offense that that's tough to game plan for right there all right, so here's one of those slap on the wrist plays from 97. So Steve Wilkes is going to blitz, and I actually love this design, by the way. So you have Chase Young, Randy Gregory, Javon Hargrave, Nick Buss on the outside. So three on one side with, you know, two of your better rushers. And then they're going to blitz both of these two. So very nice design. However, watch 97 to the bottom of the screen. Here. He can't spin here. If he just stays outside... You have one blocker for two blitzers. Instead, Bosa spins. Now the quarterback has a free run. Maybe he's not able to see. You know, if, if Drew Locke stays in the pocket, maybe he's not able to see this crosser because he has so much pressure. So the design was there, but the execution wasn't. And, I mean, it's pretty simple. Bosa just has to stay outside. All right, so on second down, you have Cleveland Farrell on the edge here making a tackle for a loss against the tight end so now you set yourself up for third and 13 and now you get to get creative right now you have to or now you get to move your guys around so this time we get nick bosa inside against a rookie right guard what do you think is going to happen so this is the first time that he was able to line up against him and i mean they just play coverage behind it no blitz right yeah just rushing four dropping seven let's see it from the end zone angle here because this guard, <laughs> there's just no way to simulate going against this player, especially for a first-year offensive lineman. So again, we get another creative setup where we got three edge rushers on the field, and then that's a sack, Bosa. Nope, but Greenlaw is there to clean it up. So again, more creative looks up front, and they just gave Seattle hell um, in the trenches. All right, this play is going to look familiar. Um, same opponent, last year, Thursday night, George Kittle. Brock Purdy looks one way. Brock Purdy looks the other way. Finds Kittle down the seam. Like in a dream world, either Tayshawn Gibson or Jair Brown make that tackle, and you force Seattle to maybe first and goal from the five. Who knows if they score a touchdown? Um, they're probably, in a dream world, you get them to settle for a field goal, but... I think it's just one of those times where, hey, man, that's a hell of a play call. Nobody saw it coming. Move on. All right, so inside, Kevin Givens to the top, defensive tackle. Javon Kinlaw is the bottom defensive tackle. Watch Kinlaw on this play. Watch that explosion off the ball. That looks like a player who is healthy. That looks like a first-rounder. Watch his get-off. Goes down the line, tackle for loss. They're going to need him. Because Eric Armstead, Kyle Shannon said he's going to miss probably another game. So Kinlaw's going to have to continue to play. More snaps than he's been playing this year. But 
I mean the way that he has been playing. It's been good. And I think coming into the season, I, I was thinking that less would be more with Kinlaw, and it, it's proven that. Mm-hmm. So it, I think these little 20 to 30 snap counts have been keeping him fresh. So hopefully that um, it leads to similar production as we as we close out the regular season. Mm-hmm. All right, now you get into these obvious passing downs. That's where it gets fun, right? So A-gap, Nick Bosa. Next to him, Javon Kinlaw on the edge. Next to him, Randy Gregory, wide nine. So three rushers, one side, Chase Young, isolated. And then you're just going to play some games. Bosa is going to act like he stunts, doesn't, and then he gets a sack. Where, honestly, that was, like, I mean, if you're just grading plays, you're not going to give him, like, a plus or anything for that. But I think just the ability, the, the versatility that they have because they have competent pass rushers like Ken Law's proven to be competent this year Randy Gregory obviously is a competent pass rusher Chase Young is a competent pass rusher and then Nick Bosa to be able to line him up inside um, is it's going to go a long way moving forward especially with some of the quarterbacks that they're going to play over these next couple of weeks bottom of the screen Randy Gregory this is his best pass rush as a 49er so this is what the 49ers were trading for what they were hoping to get from Gregory and I'm I'm just speculating here but I think like guys like him and Chase Young would be back over Cleveland Farrell just for the fact that I know I showed Farrell making a play and he had a sack, I believe, where he, you know, paid his mom to Eric Armstead. But in my mind, the way that Bosa <laughs> celebrates with you is telling because Bosa, like when Gregory makes a play, like he's right, he's right there to help him out or to celebrate with him. When Young makes a play, like he's pointing back at him. But when Farrell makes a play, and this goes for like the rest of the D line, maybe keep an eye on this moving forward. Nobody really messes with him. And I, I just kind of noticed that in this game. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep an eye on that. I may be making way much, um, way more than it is, but I just like to see guys celebrate with each other. And I think, and this team, it happens all the time. So why wouldn't it happen for 94? But the point of that play was hello, Randy Gregory. All right. So that's it. And this is the last play. Kinlaw to the left, Bosa to the left. You have Randy Gregory inside. You have Chase Young. This might be the way moving forward, especially if the D tackles are going to be banged up. So Kinlaw is going to get a sack with Bosa. They're going to split it. But again, I think with Kyler, with Lamar, with some speedy guys coming up, you're going to need more athletes on the field. So maybe this is just Steve Wilkes giving us a a foreshadowing on, on what's to come. But what the 49ers did defensively, Against the Seahawks was very impressive. I think a lot of players made plays. Like you can probably go up to 10, 11 guys that you can count on. Hey, what these guys were impressive. So a uh, very good showing by the 49ers defense. They're going to have to show up on the road next weekend against Arizona and then uh, come back on Christmas for the Ravens. So thanks again for watching. That's going to do it for the defense. Uh, again, uh, thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you haven't, and we will be back to to break down the offensive side of the ball. That was Jair Brown's, by the way. Uh, I didn't I didn't talk about this on the secondary, but look, Brown is camping under this like he's about to catch a punt. Stat hoarder, Fred Warner. Oh, that's too good. Interception. And this is where the melee happens. But um, thanks again. I'll be back with the offense.